Hi, my name is Ron Dorn, and the purpose of this presentation is to explain to you stage C of the Hawaii lab, task number three, about the rain shadow on Kohala volcano. I'll start sharing screen and see if I can do my best to explain this to you using a PowerPoint that I prepared. The general topic of following air up and over a mountain where it has a windward orographic effect and then a leeward rain shadow effect is done almost universally in physical geography labs across the world. But there's no better location than the Kohala volcano to illustrate what happens, where you get the moist trade winds encountering the volcano, it cools, then the air condenses to the point in which clouds form it's called the lifting condensation level. And then it continues to cool and you get rainfall. And then when you go back down on the leeward side of the volcano, in this case, the western side, you get a rain shadow effect. So what this lab is having you do is to walk the air mass, not in the way in which you would read, but kind of from the way in which the air is approaching it if you're looking northward at a cross section of the Kohala volcano. You're gonna be starting in the lower right, the east windward facing side, and you're gonna be looking at the temperature, the leeward side temperature, the LST, and the leeward side precipitation. You're gonna be taking the air up the mountain to 1500 meters, and then you're going to be going back down the other side of the volcano close to sea level. The general idea of adiabatic processes is the key science concept of how all this works. When you expand air, the molecules have less friction and they cool. So when the air rises up, it expands and it cools. The cooling is not because it's stuffed into a refrigerator or it's losing or gaining energy, it's because there's less friction. And when you take that air and you bring it back down to the Earth's surface, it warms back up again. So the idea of this lab is that you're gonna take a parcel of air and you're gonna drag it up a mountain and before the clouds form, the adiabatic lapse rate, it's called the dry adiabatic lapse rate is 10 degrees C per thousand meters, or for every 100 meters, this dry, uncondensed air parcel goes up, it cools one degree C. Eventually it's gonna to cool to the point in which the dew point is reached. And at that point, clouds will begin to form. Condensation occurs. When condensation occurs, there's the release of energy. Evaporation absorbs energy. Condensation releases that energy. And the lapse rate changes in Hawaii to about a half degree C per 100 meters. This is because even though it's going up and it's cooling at one degree C, that there's kind of a ping, ping, ping of energy released from condensation that compensates for this drop in temperature with elevation and air expansion. So the wet adiabatic lapse rate in Hawaii, you'll use is a half degree C per 100 meters. So you're gonna lift the air up Koala Volcano. You're gonna cool it to the point in which clouds occur. So you're gonna use the dry adiabatic lapse rate of one degree C per 100 meters and then shift to half degree C. And then you're gonna descend air back down on the lee side. So the temperature decrease in lapse rate lessens because latent heat is released with condensation. You're shifting from one degree per 100 meters going up to half degree per 100 meters going up. But when you go back down the lee side, you will always use one degree C per 100 meters because there's no condensation that's occurring. As the air descends, it warms and it's warming because of the molecular friction at one degree C per 100 meters. So always the relative humidity decreases and the air dries up when you go down the lee side. 
here are some scenes where in the Grand Canyon, you can see clouds evaporating as it descends and warms. And another one is a rain shadow effect in California where you can see the clouds evaporate as they warm going down. So this is the example problem provided in the PDF file. I'm not gonna go over this one with you because it's explained in great detail in the PDF file. Rather, I'm going to cover the example that is provided right here. So you're gonna start at zero degree, at, sorry, at, 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 at uh, zero meters with a temperature of 25 degrees, that's given to you. We have to give you the starting temperature and you then are gonna read the rainfall out to the closest 100 millimeters. So then you pop up in elevation to 500 meters. 500 meters, remember you're using the dry adiabatic lapse rate. So by going up 500 meters, the air is cooled to 20 degrees C. And you can read that the rainfall is 2300. It's the closest to the 100, you pick, you round off to the nearest 100 millimeters. Um, then at the next elevation that you're gonna measure, you simply pop up to 1,000 meters because the dew point has been reached. The dew point is 20 degrees. Because the dew point has been reached, you're cooling at the wet adiabatic lapse rate. And so that 500 meters, the net cooling is 0.5 every 100 meters or 2.5 degrees with a rainfall being closest to 400 millimeters. Then there's a change in the dew point when you, I'm sorry, there's, a, there's another drop in 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit when you go up to 100 meters. And then notice that at the 1500 meter elevation, I simply copied over the information of 20 degrees temperature and 3300 meters, because you're simply going across the volcano. And now we're gonna take it down. We're gonna drop down 500 meters and it's warm five degrees. And it's a drastic drop in precipitation you drop down another 500 meters and there's a drastic drop in precipitation and you drop down another 500 meters and there's an even greater drop in precipitation. Going down, you always use the dry adiabatic lapse rate. I hope this helps. There's another video presentation made on this exact same topic. There's detailed information in the PDF file. And if you're still confused, you can also make a Zoom appointment with the instructors and the peer mentors and the TAs. Hope this was useful.